Okay, so here's how it's gonna work. The three there are three teams that are currently in the running. We have Orphilius and Mackie, Swordtail and Google Frog, and 400 and Icons. In order to resolve who is going to be going on, Aquanims decided to have a random number generated, and since I'm on stream, I can do that while showing which random number it is. So, going to generate a random number between 3 and 5 corresponding to the seed. It's going to be 3 of Officer Sortail, so whoever's rank gets picked, that is the one going third, and it is 3! So, 3 remain 3, Sortail and Google Frog are set to be randomly number 3, Mackie Orphelius versus 400 Icons will be a tiebreaker match to determine who is in 4th place, and Golden King Staff versus Enyar and Saniac will be fighting for the fighting the winners' finals, which will be up next. Actually, now that's been sorted out. So, so that is the way things are going to go. We have Swordtail and Google Frog. They'll be waiting on the winner of the other two fighting each other for the lower bracket. The way that this is going to work, the bracket's a little bit weird, but basically the way it works is that it's going to be a double elimination bracket where the number three and number four spots auto lose, so they get knocked down to lowers immediately. And then when that happens, it'll work from there to being a standard setup, like the sort of thing we normally do. That is that. Wait, did you guys not see the standings? Shit, you didn't see the standings when I did the random. Hang on. These are the standings that I went from. So three was Team Sortail, four was Team uh, was Team Mackie, and three was Team 400. Sorry, four, five was Team 400, four was Team Mackie, three was Team Sortail. So yeah, that was how it worked. Apparently I got screwed up in studio mode. My bad. Anyway. So that is what's going to be happening next. I don't know when this is going to be refreshed or updated or whatever. For God's sake, this is content. Okay, but at any rate, we have... Well, we have the next thing, so it's going to be the winner's finals. I'll be up in a couple seconds. I'll be just getting back to that when we get to that, so stay tuned. Welcome back, Zerkay fans, to the March 2018 2-2 tournament. We have the upper bracket finals. It's a little hard to see because the bracket hasn't been totally updated yet since there's still some contention over the fourth place. But basically, but basically though, the way it's working out right now is Saniac and Anir will fight against Golda and Kingstad since that match is going on regardless of tiebreakers. While at the same time, there will be a tiebreaker match going on. So hopefully they actually play that out without me. Like... But anyway, once that's set up, now we have Anir and Golda versus King's Dad and... Sorry, Anir and Sanity versus Golda and King's Dad. And this is going to be hopefully a pretty good match. I think I think it will be. So with that, we're on Doom Patrol, a map we haven't seen in a long time. A very popular map for Hovercraft Factory. Although we are seeing Clokybot being built up by a near right off the bat, or at least being proposed to be built up by a near right off the bat. And it looks like Kingstad and Gold are going to go ham amp and hovers. Which I can see working on this map as well. That's very, very interesting approach, but yeah, totally, totally a viable option. So with that, I'm guessing we're going to be seeing a lot of I mean, a lot of daggers, a lot of ducks, possibly a lot of archers. While at the same time, Saniac, we have tanks coming out for Saniac. That's an interesting choice. I'm not sure I totally agree, but I can kind of see where that's coming in. I mean, on this map, it's very flat. And if you're able to push in with welders and start really expanding around the map, you get a lot of money off that. And pushing in with blitzes and kodachis, you can really get around and smash things up a bit. But the problem is that this isn't a very vehicle-passable map. I, wait, no, no, what am I saying? Of course it is. I just remember. I, unfortunately, I can't see the vehicle pathability characteristics, but it looks like it might be okay.
So Hover and Amph is what Golden and Kingsguard are going for. On the other hand, we have Cloakie and Tanks from the Mumble Clan. I'm really kind of curious how that's going to be built up, though, because right now this is going to be an interesting opening setup because, like I said, we have Golda and... Oh, actually, in the back of the lines, Golda and, North, Golda and Kingstead building what I'd say is a much more appropriate set of factories for this map. Because of the water in the center, and it's actually far more important than it might seem, you actually get a lot of mileage from having the amps and the hovers. And also, just to put it to rest, yes, it is vehicle pathable. Okay, so tanks definitely can get around no problem. Kodachis will have no problems getting around, and the daggers will have a bit of a harder time actually getting into the base because the Kodachis will be stopping them. So, there you go. There's going to be something. But, at the same time, the ducks are in place. They're going to make Glaive's lives miserable because that's what ducks do. The glaives cannot do much from the ducks there because the ducks have the one-shot potential on the glaives. And also have homing weapons, so it's really hard for the glaives to dodge them. Like, the one thing glaives cannot easily deal with is homing weapons. Also, giant one-shot alpha stuff like that. But mostly homing weapons. But yeah, glaives being all about dodging, anything that hits them quickly or hits them inevitably is going to be a death sentence. And the Kodachi not finding a whole lot of value. These daggers... Some of them will die. One of them is definitely going to die. The others should barely survive, but daggers need repairs. King's Dad on, on with that, so really at this point, Northwest having a fairly strong start defending their main base from early rushes from Mumble Clan. At the same time, their own rush is coming in here. The Ducks getting a lot of value. Getting mm, three glaives. Not bad. Oh, wait, no, never mind. That's actually even trade. Still, though, at this point, the position that it provides Gorda is enough that it is... Putting the pressure on, making sure that this little hole in the eastern side of the map is not going to be taken immediately. While at the same time, the equivalent hole in the western side of the map, that's been taken already. Kingstad on that. And simultaneously, we have Golda around the bottom with another duck. Might be able to take quite a bit of damage, in, or deal quite a bit of damage, if it weren't for the welder. That's the one thing, that welder there is really stopping things. But at the same time, not true for the south here. Although... No no hits managed on the Metal Extractor. The, the Solar Collector is vulnerable. But at this point, I don't know if that's a big deal. One Solar Collector, it isn't a problem. I mean, it does mean that there's less energy and it's managed to pull that off, hit that a few times and get rid of it. Well, that's Mumble Clan low on energy, low, lower energy than Metal. But at this stage in the game, that's not a huge deal. They're still building up their energy structures. They're still actively building up power plants. So yeah, the duck not really mentioning to do much other than scout, which is still good. Although even then, it's not mentioning to find... What are they even seeing? Eh, not really managing to see much. Managed to kill a couple glaives at the cost of his life, but again, that metal is inside of the Mumble Clan's territory, so good luck actually holding on to it. At the same time, metal extractor is being destroyed on northwest side. So, hey, that's the thing. They got... They got a lot of value off that Kodachi. No kill on the conch, though. And ultimately, Northwest and Mumble Clan are pretty much neck and neck when it comes to metal. There's not a whole lot in between. Really, Kodachis are just a... They're a beast if they can get in and actually deal that damage well. Which that one managed to do. But at this point, Kingstad is really building up. They have their daggers that they should be able to get rid of any glaives coming at them. That's a two-shot right there. The Ogre is a problem, though. 1650, that is way too much for basically any number of daggers. Like, 1650, that's 11 daggers you'd need in order to kill them in one shot. And if you don't do that, the ogre kills them. Because high rate of fire, riot units. Yeah, they're done at that point. And even Kingstad's commander is actually having a bit of a hard time, having not been upgraded, and with hardly any defenses behind them to stop this ogre from just wrecking face. I mean, the dagger's going to do what they can. At this point, the daggers are are going to be able to deal enough damage that this is a threat. The ogres cannot deal with them. Going for the Kingstad's commander instead, and that means the ogre does go down, even with the smaller number of daggers. Kingstad, however, probably going to be forced to retreat, maybe build a caretaker to heal themselves up, but they are not in a strong position right now. At the same time, though, Golda is getting up a Grizzly. They're already going for that, that this early in the game. And granted, yes, plus 30 metal, so they have a lot of economy to work with, but they don't have a whole lot of military to defend this. So I'm actually quite surprised they're deciding to use this. At the same time, Kingstad building up, using the resources that will be going to the Grizzly to get a few forces just to support, get those scalpels, Get a bit of defense going, but at the same time, the Minotaur coming in on top of that. I mean, Saniac is really pushing hard, and Anir even more so. Having a bit of a hard time finding what they need, but still, it's 
finding enough to at least hold them off, keep them keep the expansions that Mumble Clan has taken so far, and then probably pull from there. Once the Minotaur, as they have now gotten in position, should be able to deal with most of this fairly effectively. The daggers are going to do their level best to deal with this, but Welder Minotaur. I mean, we're just who think you actually ever see welders as a frontline force here? But no, that's the new buff. That's what they can do now. And with King Stats Commander down, that is a major blow for the economy of the Northwest Side. The Minotaur might go down, but even then, it's hard to say that it will. I actually kind of doubt it. So with that, Saniac has put so much pressure on the north, on the Northwest, and the Northeast. It's been maintained. That's all that Anir needed to do was keep the Northeast alive, keep the Northeast in their control. The Northwest, that's been opened up. I mean, the Ducks are doing their best to try to stop this Minotaur, and actually, I mean, the Welders are there also for repair, but at this point, the Ducks are actually managing to make this a very difficult job. In fact, the Duck will be able to take out the Minotaur, just... Oh, no, the repairs. Clutch repairs coming in. The Scalpel, however, does still finish the job, taking out both of them, making those clutch repairs completely moot, but man, that was close. However, now that that's gone down, and Nier going in with the Cloaky sneak in, some Rovers and Grizzly... Or sorry, Rovers and... Reaver, but against the Grizzly, it's not enough. Against the Grizzly and the Scalpel, especially, it's not enough. Managed to get some Metal Extractors. Didn't manage to get a whole lot of anything else. Now, of course, the counterattack seems to be on the way, but at the same time, we have Ogres here. That'll help deal with the Scalpels. We have Ronin, which will also fight the Scalpels toe-to-toe. -to -toe. We have Slings, which will actually manage to get the Scalpels from a distance. So, this is not necessarily going to be a super strong counterattack. It might manage to get a Metal Extractor or two. That's still something. But the main weakness Mumble Clan has right now is lack of build power, which is currently being rectified by a near Saniac. I'm worried more about using their commander for that. Getting that set up there, but pretty soon I hope we'll have those caretakers up. For their sake, at least, we'll have the caretakers up. And that gives Mumble Clan the ability to use all their economy. And yes, there's the caretakers. And that is going to be a massive boon to Mumble Clan. Like, they've got this set up. Where as long as they manage to hold off this Grizzly, they're going to have an economic lead that's now a production lead that should lead to them winning. But at the same time, this big push coming in here, if that economic lead doesn't come up in time, Northwest will be able to take it. Golden Kingstead will be able to push this. They pretty much just have about a minute. If Golden and Kingstead don't win this in the next minute, then Anir and Saniac have a good shot. But it looks like Golden and Kingstead are in such a strong position that winning it in a minute is not going to be a challenge. The Saniac's commander going down. And with all of their forces being dead, Anir and Saniac throw in the towel. They did not manage to build up their production in time to make that work. And Golda and Kingstead take the upper bracket finals, assuming that they aren't best of three. I actually didn't check. Fairly certain they aren't best of three. So, again, I apologize. We don't really have much in the way of actual brackets because they haven't been built yet because the tiebreaker is still going on. Actually, to that end, I do want to see what's going on with that. It might be ongoing now. But unless this is best of three, I don't realize that. And it is not as best of one, so we have time to actually see what's going on with that tiebreaker. Here it is, 400 Nikes per second. Oh no, that's the last one. It was tiebreak. It's been going on for about eight minutes. So let's see what's happening with the tiebreaker match. Because that match is going to be leading into the lower bracket match, the lower pre-finals, which will then be leading into the lower finals. And I think this is also on Doom Patrol, but I'm not entirely sure. I should have checked before getting in the match, but... Well, that's the way things go, I guess. Yes, it is Doom Patrol, and it is going to be a... What's the start here? And we have Mackie and Orphelius as Cloaky and Rover against Icons as Shield against... Where is Force 400? Oh, Proxy Tank Factory. Bit of risky strategy there, but clearly managing to hold it for long enough. And while at the same time, the Rovers are being masked to try to deal with what's going on in the Southwest, they're mostly just going to go, oh, wait, you know what? The main base? That's vulnerable. Let's open. We can grab that. They go in and smash up the Shieldbot Factory, which was very smart because there wasn't a whole lot they could take in the north, the Southwest. But when Kingstad's not, or when is not there, that means that the main base is one player. Two players' forces can take it, and that's exactly what happened. Icon's Commander under some threat, but able to escape. The main advantage to that, however, is now Southeast has the entire eastern half of the map, and another push into the center, another t another wedge taking advantage, or trying to take advantage of the position, but at this point, 400 is set up. They can help defend their teammate. The main base is no longer as vulnerable. 
just because there's only one factory and really no factories now. But at the same time, Icons does not have another factory. That's the thing. It's Icons lacking that factory means that there's not much there that really is going to be building up. And while Southeast, they have the economic advantage, I can now just get in this factory, making Northwest no longer be accessing, but with all the rocket, with all the running up, it's, this is over. I can is going to go down. The towel will likely be thrown immediately afterwards. And then that will be, that'll be game. That'll be Mackie and Orpheus going on to fourth place, fighting against Swordtail and Google Frog to get to the losers finals. Because Mackie and Orpheus, unless they, unless they're torn apart here, it's actually I mean, it looks like Mackie and Ophelia's have this, but it's hard to tell whether or not they're actually managing to close this out, because, I mean, Ikins is nearly dead. Mackie might just give them some units, but Mackie's still in this. Mackie still has a few units. That's some pillagers making life miserable on the south side of the map. But this siege, I mean, the amount of territory control Southeast has, and the amount of build power they have, they're fit taking full advantage of their economy. This isn't just, this isn't excess resources. They've got everything. All they need is one good push. At this point, they've got the contain. They're making that a problem, but they aren't. They aren't pushing it. Now they're pushing it. They weren't pushing it. Now they're pushing it. This should be it. Lotus is being built up. It's. It's gonna be a slight roadblock, but that's it. The Ronin, they're gonna push in immediately afterwards. The Stingers are up, and actually, the Ronin are gonna have a hard time dealing with that as well. The Stingers will be able to cause some misery again. Not enough though. Not enough to really make it a threat. And with that. Ronin go in. A few of them die, but the Stinger is going to go down in the process, and that is fine. It's all they need with the Reavers in the back, just to provide extra assault force, extra, extra buff in the front, extra meat in the front, tanking things out a little bit, making sure the Blitzes cannot get away with anything, and that means they die to the Fencers. And this north side, though, that's not a huge point of contention. I mean, really, the south side is where the production is, and mostly where the economy is. Not a whole lot of economy is in the north side. So northwest. The metal they have, it's more that's getting excess. There's nothing building up. This factory has no characters next to it, so there's not a whole lot that can be done. At this point, it is going to be just a matter of getting that last few hits in. That's all it is. Once those last few hits are taken, once the blitzes go down, there's really not much that Northwest has that will stop Southeast. And that is... That is kind of it. I mean, I admire that 400 icons, they're staying in this. I mean, they do want to stay in as long as they can. Maybe they can find some angle to get back in this match. But it's it's the thing is that they don't have much economy. They've got very little left. And I can't point out dominatrices, but even building the rover factory to get the dominatrices would be way too much money. Like 22 metal per second, that would take 40 seconds with their entire economy pushed into it. And in that time, that's easily a push. They don't have reinforcements building up in that time. They get pushed. The Blitz is the only thing that's stopping this entire final push. And even then, it's more so that this Grizzly not being up is start stopping the final push. Now that the Grizzly's up, this is over. The South Side's getting flanked in by the Grizzly, while the North Side getting atta gets attacked by the Ronin Reavers. I mean, Mackie is going straight on cue because of that Grizzly being done. And now that that's the case, I mean, that Grizzly's walking in, surprisingly not going towards the factory. But that's still it. I mean, at this point, we're going to have this Ronin Reaver Force just push in down south. 400 Nikon's commanders are pretty vulnerable, and the Grizzly in the south, and not much to stop it. I mean, the Blitzes are going to try, but they're getting one shot by the Grizzly, and it's going to take a while for them to stun out the Grizzly far longer than three of them have to live. And at the same time, with the Ronin Reavers coming in to provide support against the Blitzes, yeah, they really don't have that time at all. So with that, I can only see towels in the future for Mackie and Orphelius. Thrown in their faces. 400 and Icons are the ones throwing the towels. I got totally mixed up there. But yes, 400 and Icons, they have, they have their commanders. That's it. The commanders are going to go down, and that'll be when the that'll be when the GG happens. Actually, how are they upgraded? They are Beam Laser and Machine Gun. I mean... That's not going to matter too much once this next Grizzly shot fires off and kills off 400's commander. Or no, 400's commander actually managing to just hide behind the Stinger for the time being. But again, this is... This is over. Once that happens, there is basically no economy. No storage, for sure. Already, Northwest losing a fair bit on excess straight off the bat. 
Now, I'll grant they are getting quite a bit of build power in their main base to make use of what they have, but that's only 20 build per second. So, that's not enough. 400 throws in the towel, Icons agrees, and that is 400 and Icons in fifth place. Mac and Ophelius going on to fight for third against Swordtail and Google Frog. This tournament can continue. The bracket can actually be properly constructed now. Not sure what's going to happen with that because there has a. I mean, there has to actually be the destruction. I know Aqu Aquanim is quite busy right now. But that is how things go. So we have Google Frog and Swordtail will be up next. And I'm not sure what map that's going to be on. Because it is. Like. Google Frog. Hmm. Google Frog and Swordtail against 400 Nike. We saw it before. Mackie and Orphelius, rather. And Mackie and Orphelius did manage to win. But that was in a really, really awkward situation. And a map that you don't see played very often. And with strategies that I don't think would work twice. Anyway. That is the next matchup. And it's going to... Who's going to be on? Because, I mean, quarterfinals B. So it's going to be called here. And that... I expect to be on Doom Patrol, but no. So now the bracket is available or will be soon available. I'm pretty excited. Challenge is a pain in the ass. All right, it's it's jumping back and forth because I can't get challenge to just go to the finals and nothing else, which is a bit of a pain in the button. But whatever. 